um, welcome to this evening's session. We are talking about how you can maximise your membership with women in banking and finance. Um, my name is Natalie Gill and I am one of the directors on the management board of Women in Banking and Finance. And as some of you may know, we are a volunteer-led organisation. So all of the volunteers that you meet today and members of the management board are, all have day jobs within financial services or affiliates um, associations as well. Um, the purpose of today's session is really to tell you a little bit more about all of the great stuff that we're doing, um, what you can get involved in, how to use your membership to, to, the, to the maximum, to really support you in whichever area or aspect of the work that we do that is most relevant to you. Um, I am delighted to be able to welcome a number of my co-volunteers um, across the management board who will talk about various different areas of the work that we do. But before we get started, just a couple of, of quick housekeeping things. Um, there are quite a few of us on the line today. So I think the easiest thing in terms of questions is probably to type them into the chat. And um, one of my colleagues, Rachel, will keep an eye on that for you. Um, and at the end, there will be another opportunity to do a more open Q&A session as well. So please do keep your questions coming through and we will make sure that we've got plenty of time to answer those at the end. Um, and Rachel, if there are any that are particularly relevant, then you can also bring those up during the course of the session. Um, the first thing I'd like to do, if I may, is just do a very quick poll to get a sense of who we've got with us today. So this event is open to um, people who either are already members recently or for a long time or have not yet become a member. So we just want to get a sense really of, of who we've got in the, in the room with us today. So we've got a really nice mix of people here today, which I think will be great in terms of um, thinking about some of the work that we're doing. We can talk about some of the changes since we met. So we run these sessions on a quarterly basis. Um, and so we will give you some updates on, on what else we've been doing in the last three months since we last had the session as well. But it's del we're delighted to, to welcome some people who um, are just interested in finding out some more about WIBIF. We hope that we answer some of your questions for you. Um, we will be sending out some follow-up information. So please do, you know, you don't need to jot down lots of notes. We'll, we'll send through some information to you and, and some of the pack as well so that you've got that and where to go in terms of how to become a member, how to sign up to, for um, the mentoring programme and, and where to see all the various events that we run. So we will send you some more information later on. So I am now going to hand over. I'm delighted that we have um, got a new president and I'd like to welcome now um, our new president, Anna Lane, to tell us a little bit about yourself, about how, why you've got interested, why you wanted to, to come and, and join us and, and take us forward on our next stage of our journey. And also just a little bit about the purpose of Women in Banking and Finance. Thank you very much. Um, First comment is it's such a bad picture. I look at that picture and I'm just thinking, oh, dread. Um, so a bit about me. I have been volunteering actually since about 2006 or seven. Um, I have been involved in the Young Vic board um, for a very long time. I've been a member of WIBIF for 18 years. I think I originally joined when I was at Morgan Stanley. Um, and recently I've been working, working on the maps UK financial wellbeing strategy. So for me personally, uh, it's very important. I think selfishly, it's not just about um, doing something that gives back. It's something that I really enjoy. It's really meaningful. It means that I meet so many different people. And I think for anybody who, and I noticed the polls earlier on, we've got people that are thinking about joining, are joining, are a member already, um, or are new members. So when you think about why you join these sorts of membership organisations and if you consider things like volunteering, selfishly a lot of it is about what you're going to get out of it, not just about what you're doing for everybody else. So I run my own business. I've worked in finance for many years. Um, I've got 25 years plus experience in the city um, and that would have been all around investment management, so launching investment products and services. And now I slightly sit on the other side of the fence. So I run a business that my job is to ensure that financial products and services are fair for consumers and accessible, which means that I work a lot with the financial regulators. I get involved in 
uh, product governance. And as a consequence, I am very passionate about um, encouraging more women to save and invest. Why is that important when we also think about women's careers? Because actually um, your financial life is very linked to your working life. So um, I, I think I have a very interesting perspective on all of this. I've loved being a part of WIBIF because for me, it's always been the network that's been most relevant to me and my career. Um, meeting other people that work in other financial services companies has been great because we can share stories, we can share challenges. We, we know the different companies that are involved. It's always been very important. The, the thrust of the organization, I think, is also very, very important. Um, and it's, it's so exciting for me to get involved in it. And if we think about the real mission of WIBIF, um, so we talk about connecting, challenging and inspiring. So this is about it's about connecting the members. We've got this huge network. We have 33 corporate members, I think it is. Um, and, and these are the really the biggest financial services companies. And it's UK wide, which is really important. So, so I think oftentimes in finance, people, the criticism would be you're London, you're Southeast. Well, that's not the case for Wibif at all. There are many other um, centres outside of London that are important. They're very important employers of um, financial services um, uh, individuals. So Sally uh, on the line, Sally's based up in Edinburgh. Jenny, who's going to talk next, is going to talk about the fact that we're very regional and we do challenge the industry. So yes, our members are made up of individuals working in industry and corporates working in industry, and we're their voice. So for us, it's about how can we lead and have a voice? How can we affect policy, as well as looking at how we nurture women working in finance and promote their careers? And hopefully we, we inspire people because we're all about change, not just change for the sake of change, but change because we want to see change and want to get involved in it. So. Um, I've got an interesting background. I am from finance. I'm now an entrepreneur, which makes me sort of, I think representative of a lot of women that work in finance now. So that we actually, our clients are financial services companies. Um, and I'm so excited. I'm so honored to be involved in something that I've, I've basically been a member of for so long. So that's, that's a little bit about me. Um, I think I'm going to hand to Jenny next because Jenny's going to talk about the fact that we are not a, we are not just a sort of a London Southeast, we are a totally regional network. Jenny. Thanks, Anna. Um, yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Jenny Koo. I'm actually based right in the Midlands, so I am not far from Birmingham. Um, and Birmingham is actually the branch that I set up um, in 2017, having come back from uh, doing a couple of years and stints of roles in London, um, I realised that actually, you know, the connectivity out in the, the well, anywhere outside of the M25, I think was um, <laughs> probably not that great for financial services. Um, but having been a member of Women in Banking and Finance, um, knew that this was a great opportunity for us to, to connect um, and for me to kind of understand a little bit more about the the organisation um, and actually start to bring that regional lens to what Women in Banking and Finance um, actually is, is trying to deliver. So I'm pleased to say um, I'm now the, the, the head of branches, so I look after all of the locations outside, um, uh, well essentially outside of London. Um, I, as I said, we launched Birmingham in 2017. Um, in 2019, we launched Manchester, so we were gradually expanding our, um, our presence. Uh, and I'm absolutely delighted to say that this year in 2021, um, we're soon to launch the Belfast. Um, so our first kind of um, position in, 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 in Northern Ireland. So really excited about that. But it, the opportunity that it gives us is to really, really delve into those regional differences. Um, and as somebody, you know, that, that's worked in, in, in a number of locations, actually, just to know that there are, you know, that the lifestyle's different, um, actually, the opportunities are different, it doesn't make us any less qualified for roles, um, it doesn't make us any more, any less capable, um, and, and actually being able to inspire and, and encourage, you know, the, the female population in financial services, as well as the pipeline to come into financial services, that your development is you know, absolutely possible. Um, and then we challenge, um, I'm always challenging organizations in terms of you know, when they're recruiting 
for roles, um, particularly uh, given the current situation. I think um, it, it's probably become clear that it doesn't actually matter where you're based in the country. You can be just as efficient and as effective anywhere, um, you know, with the use of technology. But I think for the benefit of as individuals, for members, um, you know, when we do provide and we do give a regional lens to our activities. So all of the locations have their own regional boards um, and each of those regional boards will have representation on some of the other strands that we'll be talking about later on. Um, uh, so with some of my other colleagues here from a mentoring perspective, um, a thought leadership perspective, the communities and networking. Um, and actually, we are launching in the in the branches this year some more focused networking within the branches, so that we can connect you with your fellow members within region um, to talk about you know your 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 kind of similar experiences, but also um, you know just to know that you've got people locally that are going through the same thing, um, you know, or just ask, reaching out for support. Um, but I'll leave it there in terms of. Um, what we offer, um, because we'll cover some more in um, uh, with each of the, the next people we're going to talk to. So I'm going to hand over to Liz for Head of Thought Leadership and Events. Thanks, Jenny. I'm Liz Hughes. I'm Director of Thought Leadership. Um, I'll touch on why I joined my kind of journey with WIBIF, and then I'll talk about Thought Leadership. Um, so I'll, I'll fill you in. So I, I joined WIBIF when I'd actually left the corporate world and set up my own uh, financial services business, and I was feeling quite isolated. I just had my second child, and so I was looking for a network to join. I'd heard about WIBIF in my 20s, but I'd, I never, never really had gone to any gender networks, and so I thought I'd start with them. And I'm so pleased I did. I went and I immediately felt at home. The people were friendly. They were warm. It wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. My first event was a PEP event, which was the flagship program at, at that point and still is one of our flagship programs. And at the end of, of the event, I couldn't really um, sit on my hands. So I put my hand up to volunteer. And, and that was kind of the beginning of my WIBIF um, journey, as it were. I then, um, shortly after, I ended up running the PEP program for, for London. I then ran the mentoring program, networks, women on boards for London. Um, I launched the alumni and the millennials program, which it was. Um, and then I became responsible for all programs across the UK, which, as I'm sure you can imagine, is a bit of a full time job. So um, we went about divvying it up. And that's what, where you see the pillars um, that we have today. And um, I went on to be responsible for thought leadership, which I'm thrilled with. So in summary, it's it's the best stretch assignment I could have ever hoped for. There's lots to talk about at interviews, so it certainly helped me with my career progression and getting back into the market after having a stint out as an entrepreneur. Um, I meet fascinating people every day. I absolutely love it, um, hence why I've been a volunteer for seven years and on the management board for four of those. So if you join, I hope you love it as much as I do. So. That's kind of my journey. Um, so what does thought leadership entail? Now there's lots going on in thought leadership and it's across um, the UK as well. And obviously at the moment it's all digital. So it's really accessible. Um, I'll give you a, a bit of a whistle stop tour of the programs. Now Hot Topics is, is one of our key programs. It's research led. Uh, we have diverse panel events with academics, industry experts, think tanks, um, covering hot topics within financial services. We try and incorporate breakout rooms, opportunities for Q&A, any sort of online networking. Obviously, when we're in person, we make sure we have lots of networking as well. And, and fingers crossed, we move back to that um, soon. In terms of hot topic events, um, this past year, we've run an event at the Hungarian Embassy on women in a tech driven world. We looked at gender stereotyping all the way from the early years to the office. We looked at the economic impact of COVID. The Bank of England provide regular economic briefings for us. Uh, we looked at lessons from the Women in Finance Charter with Julia Gillard, who's the former Prime Minister of Australia and King's College London. Um, Tina Fordham, who's the ex-chief global political analyst at City, looked at the political landscape and we looked at gender from a governance point of view, so kind of the stewardship angle. 
So if I talk about a little bit about our Distinguished Speakers Programme, which is a, another brilliant programme showcasing high profile industry practitioners and academics. So in the past year, we had Sue Dore, who's a WIBIF patron. She's also Head of Financial Services for Scotland at EY. We had Michael Colfontaine, who's brilliant if you've seen him talk. He's also a WIBIF patron and he's the chairman of AFME and CISI. We had James Bardrick. Um, UK head at City and David Craig, um, the definitive CEO. So, so there's lots going on. And, and what we've done with Distinguished Speakers is we used to have our events with networking. Now we kind of, we're playing around with the timings of events as well, um, not only during the day, but also the length um, so that you, you have a variety to choose from um, that hopefully fits in with your busy lives. Um, all these events are available online so you can access them as a member. And um, we've got an amazing program coming for the coming year, so you will not be disappointed, I can promise you that. Uh, on the conference side, we partner with external co conference providers, we advise them on thought leadership content, and we also help them to curate diverse panels. And as a result, you will get access to discounted tickets as a member. So that's worth looking out for in the newsletters that we send around. We have the Knowledge Hub, which is a brilliant resource. We collate all the latest gender-related thought leadership content online for you. So do look at that on the website. And then really um, our exciting development of the last year is the research program, which you, you may have heard of already. So to celebrate Wibbis 40th anniversary last year, we launched um, Wibbis Accelerating Change Together Research Program. It's the UK's first cross-sector research programme. It's designed to bring a gender lens to the UK's financial services industry. We are partnering, um, well, our academic partner is Dr. Grace Lorden. She's a professor in behavioural science at the LSE, and we are so pleased to have her on board. We're also thrilled to have the Wisdom Council, a financial services consumer insight and engagement specialist working with us on this programme. And together we're a formidable um, team bringing this research and, and actually bringing all these people together. So you'll see the list of sponsors there and it really reflects the breadth of WIBIF and also um, it's across the industry. And that's really important to us that we are for everyone. So everyone from you know when you first start your career to, to when you're very senior and also from, to, from across the industry. So we're trying to reflect that in our programme. The programme is four years. Um, the first year is focused on the missing middle. So why are women leaving? Why is there a lower percentage of females in senior roles? Um, each year comprises of quantitative and qualitative research, resulting in a report which has practical interventions that the firms, so the sponsors that have signed up, can trial um, and then they feed back to the group. And we hope that by working as a team, which everyone's really keen to do and sharing, we can actually make more progress with the gender agenda. And that's what we're trying to do there. We're also trying to affect policy, as Anna mentioned earlier as well. So in our first year, we've had over 2000 professionals complete the survey. We're now ca carrying out the qualitative piece of the first year and then um, the first year's kind of final report and the interventions are due in May 2021. So do keep an eye out for that. I suppose some initial findings for you um, are the survey found that women are significantly more likely to have experienced barriers in their careers than men. So that's 79% versus 58%. And that women and men in this study do not differ in ambition. There is no ambition gap. And they are asking equally for opportunities. However, women still have worse outcomes. So we're gonna explore this more in the qualitative research that's being carried out next. So look out for that May report. Um, I'll ensure that you get a copy of the um, first report, which was off the back of the survey that we did at the end of last year um, in the post email follow up that we'll send out to you after this event. And we'll also put the link um, to our website where we opened um, the London Stock Exchange. 
and we had a massive event. And Elise Bado, who's our head of research, talks through the uh, the result findings there as well. So there's a 10 minute section, which if you don't watch anything else, just watch that because it's really good. So other initiatives that we've got going on this year, we're building out a research community so that you can participate in gender related external and internal research. We're going to launch this in Q2 of this year. And we're also building out a female speakers list to help our members get access to speaking opportunities and coverage in the press. And again, that should launch in Q2 this year. So I hope that gives you uh, a bit of a flavor for thought leadership at WIBIF. That's all from me. I'm gonna hand back to Anna, who's gonna talk to you about our awards. Thanks. Brilliant. I was about to do one of those, like you're on mute. <laughs> uh, so, so like most organizations, we've had to really re-engineer the way that we do awards. And I think um, first and foremost, thank you to everybody who's who's been patient whilst we understand how we're going to do that. You know, we are known for the fact that we do an annual awards event and we recognize um, women and men um, in um, a series of categories that really um, look at celebrating people that are starting their career, that are trailblazers in different ways. So what we've decided to do, like many organizations, is that this year, these will, our awards will be digital. We don't know what's going to happen as the year progresses. We would love to be able to um, think that we might be able to do some small in-person things at the end of the year, November, December. But for now, we're going to go digital. We are going to, and that actually is not a, um, uh, how can I say, it? it's not going to be any less of a celebration. In fact, it gives you opportunities to amplify more, you know, the short lists of wonderful individuals um, and also um, within organisations, share it far more widely because we're not going to be constrained by the fact we have a venue with certain numbers of places. So last year's um, awards, we're going to do a ceremony, a virtual ceremony, digital awards event on March the 18th. It's going to run between 12.30 and 1.30. We uh, would love to talk to you about the amazing speakers we've got lined up for that. We're just firming up now exactly who they are. Uh, we're pretty excited about it. We're going to talk about it probably in the next couple of weeks on social media. But the idea is that we're going to celebrate the shortlist. We're going to run a virtual awards ceremony and we're going to recognize the achievement of really a very amazing shortlist. Our 2021 awards are going to take place in October. Uh, again, digitally, but we will look to see if it's allowed um, to run some small in-person events or celebrations at the end of the year. If not, we'll defer, we'll do some kind of a lovely party um, next year. But the point is, is that you get to celebrate um, and recognize individuals. I think for us, digital actually means that we can truly be regional. We can truly acknowledge all of the people that we've got um, in terms of the shortlist. And it's just a different way of celebrating. It's not a, 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 any kind of less way of doing it. So we've um, got a plan in place. We're talking about it. We're going to announce um, an update this week's on Friday with our new weekly newsletter. If nobody's noticed, Julia Smith is, I think, on the call, not speaking. She's very quiet and doing. She's actually launched a whole new weekly program of updates. I would say this is the new WIMBF, which is that we're going to communicate more. We will be talking about that more in on Friday. I would like to hand over to, I can't remember who's next on the slide. <laughs> Thank you. It's me. That's oh, it's Stacey. God's most glamorous <laughs> woman, it's Stacey. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, so firstly, those of you who may not uh, know me or I've not come across before, I'm Stacey Lamb. I'm the Director of Communities and Networking at WIBIF. I took on this role in mid-2019. Um, mid I had to think about that for a moment. After being an individual member of WIBIF for, for many years, and the reason that I chose to volunteer with WIBIF was really down to the people I'd met previously from networking with WIBIF. Um, I'd been the co-chair of the Women at Tesco Bank Network. So we'd done a lot of events together. And actually, it was meeting Liz, meeting Jenny, meeting Sally, and actually coming away from those events, both inspired, but actually feeling like I'd actually learned something practical that I could take and continue to, to develop my own career with. 
Um, so when I met Liz, I'd, I'd uh, changed organisations and I was hosting an event in London and Liz came um, to be the WIBIF representative and her and I had a glass of wine after the event and she was telling me about all the work she'd done and all the work she needed to do and all the people she didn't have to help her do it. So I got in touch with her the very next day and said, I'd love to join, I've got ideas that, that I'm sure will dovetail into all of the fabulous work you've already done. And the rest, as they say, is history. I, I joined Liz and Vivian at the time. And actually that, that camaraderie that we hope that you feel both as corporates and individual members is definitely felt within our, our uh, volunteer network. I learn uh, and I feel energized from being around such like-minded people. So that's exactly why I joined WIBIF. It's why I continue to, to really love adding value and hopefully contributing to the value that you gain, whether you've become an individual member recently, whether you're a corporate who has members within our network, or indeed, whether you're here tonight to just understand what we offer. So what do I offer? So um, communities and networking is actually a very new initiative at WIBIF. And so when I talk to you about some of the, the uh, individual communities we have, please note that they're, they're really in the forming stage. And, and I probably have a bit of a plea in this call in that if you find any of this interesting and you think that you too could add value, I'm seeking volunteers to help grow and develop our communities further. So if any of this piques your interest and you think, actually, I could add value to this and, and I, I think I can take from this, then please do reach out and get in touch because I'd be delighted to have both your thought leadership within the communities that we already have, but indeed in what we hope to continue to develop over the, this year and next. So the communities that we have in place at the moment, you will have heard from Jenny, we've got our regional networks who before we obviously all became digital last year in this, had their own uh, regional aspects of, of communities and networking, but equally were linked in with, within the team. Our senior business leaders is led by a le lady called Nita. This is one of the only communities that we currently have, which is by invite. And the purpose of that community is to enable our senior business leaders to come together, discuss thought leadership and hot topics that are very pertinent to the roles that they play. That community actually really serves a great purpose in enabling, particularly from a corporate perspective, our senior business leaders to, to um, understand DNI topics, things that they really need to get under the skin of, policies, regulatory aspects that they can take back into their own organisation to, to, to gain influence. Our future leaders, oh thank you very much Nat, I've seen that you've, <laughs> you've moved the slides on for me. Um, yeah, our future leaders, this is an upcoming community actually and again, should any of you wish to get involved in our future leaders community, we would be delighted to have you join us. This is very much about us carving forward the way that WIBIF continues to develop and grow into the future. And our future leaders very much are younger females in their early stages of their career and hoping to, to gain that skill of navigating a career through management and you know through the scales. And, and as I say, they're focused on doing some really cool thought leadership and some really, really futuristic events. So um, yes, I'm crying out for volunteers in that space. I'd be really delighted to speak to you about that. Our awards alumni is actually another quite bespoke community. So obviously Anna touched there on, on the success of our awards. And our alumni are anybody who's been involved in winning an award or nominated for award in the past in coming together to really continue to grow and, and help us shape the strategy of what WIBIF continues to become for our members. Our alumni um, at the moment meet, um, obviously, digitally, but they meet in a more informal way, again, round tables, um, just, just bringing up their own hot topics and, and thought leadership that they want to discuss with one another. So our communities come together at the moment in quite a relaxed manner. We come together to do thought leadership topics, events, and, and to provide some thought leadership content onto the website. But equally, individual members have connected with one another out with the remit of what we provide, WhatsApp groups, um, Slack groups. 
So, so the communities are there really for individual members to, to really gain that network around topics that they're interested in, but equally for our corporate members to be able to gain access, like I say, to content and thought leadership aligned to some of these areas. And one of which um, our Men as Allies community is one that I'm really passionate about. We launched our Men as Allies community last year in conjunction with our corporate partner, Santander, and the event was wonderful. We had Baroness Sriti Badera and, as Liz mentioned, Michael Colefontaine um, do um, a fireside chat, and it was really brilliant. And our Men as Allies community is very much about us bringing, and again, just to point out, I'm not wedded to the name Men as Allies. We can call that whatever we want to call it, but it's very much about us gaining that traction and support about having a voice around the table collaboratively. So whatever that community gets called in the future, this is very much about us working together to solve and re resolve issues. And really about us as women, having that allyship and support of our male colleagues. Um, and really to help us remove obstacles to create a better balanced working environment for all really. So going forward, we're about to launch some new communities in, in the next quarter, one of which is a coaching community. And I'll be able to share more information with that um, with you all on that in the next coming few weeks. But it's again, a wonderful opportunity for our individual members to gain access to, to certain areas of their career that they may not always be able to access. Um, equally, we're about to embark on our female entrepreneur community. We have a female stewardship community um, likely to be launched in Q2, as well as a women in technology community. So in essence, the communities, as I say, are forming. I'd be grateful of any input and anything that you would like to, to both gain from a community, but equally add to our communities. And they link in very much with all of that hard work that Liz just described. So where we can, we'll provide thought leadership, content, hot topics, and align them to these communities for you to get best value from this area of WIBIF. So like I say, any questions, or certainly if you'd like to volunteer in this space, do drop me a line and I'd really, really be delighted to speak to you. And with that, I'll hand you over to Sally. Thanks very much, Stacey. And thank you everybody who's joined the call today. My name is Sally McFall and I'm the director of the Mentoring and Development Programme. So I've personally been involved in WIBIF now for about six years and it has been an incredible roller coaster for me in terms of what I've been involved in and what I've had access to. So I actually started off looking after the mentoring just for Edinburgh. Then I went on to look after the corporate accounts nationally. Then I was very fortunate to look after the awards for three years. So that fabulous picture of uh, Mark Carney, I managed to, you know, I did that event and it was fabulous. I'm really looking forward to seeing how we're going to move that forward. And then recently this year, I was asked to look after the mentoring and development program. So I personally have a real interest within this because my day job is I run my own recruitment business and I'm really keen that we want to give a program that gives people what they need to help them in this journey. So before I went into it, I reached out, I spoke to lots of members, I spoke to lots of our corporates to go, what can we do that's gonna be beneficial and interest? And really the four pillars that came on the back of that is to offer a mentoring program that covers career development, conflict management, personal brand networking and people management. So I'm absolutely delighted to let you know that as of this, as of now, we are now doing monthly intakes to our mentoring programme. So the programme will still last for six months, uh, but you can join at any part during your membership. And there's two easy ways to do it. Go to the website and either look under this discover button to what we offer or look under the learn button for mentoring. And it's just a very, very quick um, couple of questions that you need to answer and then we will help you on the back of that. But to go hand in hand with our mentoring programme, and if we can flip to the next slide, um, I'm delighted to say that we have put a real rigorous programme for our personal excellence programme, or what we lovingly call PEP. 
And this is all around those four pillars that I mentioned. So each of the events has a theme linked with either career development, uh, personal brand networking, people management or conflict management. And what we've done is we've put on or we're going to be putting on at least two or three events each month. So in the month of January, we've already had two events and those events were creating an impact in the virtual world by this fabulous Esther Stanhope, who is the impact guru. We've also had Robert McKinlop to do a session on the importance of curiosity, clarity and rituals. And on Monday, we have an event which is around building your winning career strategy. So one of the areas that I'd like to let people know, which I think is really important, is all of our events are actually recorded. So please feel free to sign up to any of the PET program events that we do. And even if unfortunately something happens and you can't attend it, if you've registered, then a copy of the recorded event will be sent to you. So um, as like with the others, always keen to hear sort of new ideas and thoughts. So please feel free to share those. But um, I look forward to seeing as many of you on the PET program and also joining our mentoring program this year. And then with that, I'd like to hand back to Natalie. Thank you. Thanks, Sally. And thanks, everyone. Um, before I sort of go through some of the mechanics of, of how you can join if you haven't already or how to get involved with some of the stuff that we're doing, um, what would be really interesting and helpful for us is to really get a sense from you, and this is a great opportunity for us to ask you what it is that you want to hear from us. So Sally's talked about some of the fantastic pet programs that are running. Liz spoke about some of the amazing um, hot topic and distinguished speaker events that we ran last year. But what do you want to hear um, more about this year? So um, if Lauren, we're able to put up the, the second poll, um, we've put down sort of seven high level topics that we've identified. Please do check as many of these as you would like and let us know what it is that you would like to, to, do, to complete. Just give you another few seconds if you haven't yet had chance. Just a few more people still voting. Perfect. Thank you. I'm going to stop there and just share the results with you. And, and I think this is a really critical element of women in banking and finance. We don't profess to be the experts in knowing what it is that you want to hear about. So we regularly ask you, in fact, after every single event, we ask you to tell us what you want to hear about, what is going to help you in your career, um, whether it's from a, a a uh, work perspective, whether it's from a gender perspective, whether it's from a personal development perspective, what is it that you want to hear about? So um, I think, particularly for Liz, there's some very strong signs here that we, we want to focus a lot more and, and Sally on, um, you know, what our skills need to be for the future in terms of post-COVID, where we're going to go from here. Um, I think, Anna, some of the work that you've been doing with, with MAPS on the gender pension and savings gap is going to be really valuable for us to, to talk more about. Come on, um, we'll... take control, take control. Exactly. Um, so we can certainly do that. So thank you for that. Intersectionality and social mobility is a, is a personal interest of mine. Um, so we'll absolutely make sure that we, we run some topics on that. And I know ESG and climate change as well. And stewardship, this, the topic we ran at the start of last year was so interesting and exciting around stewardship. And there's definitely more that we need to do there. Um, thank you for that feedback. We will make sure that we incorporate this into our plans for the coming year. And as ever, always please do contact us through um, our, our website and so on to, um, to tell us what it is you want to hear about. So just very quickly, you've heard obviously from Stacey very loudly, but we're always looking for volunteers. And, you know, it's new year, new chance to think about what it is you want to get out of 2021 thinking about you know, what perhaps the impact of last year gave you in terms of, of your outlook and what your priorities are. So if you're interested in getting more involved with us, if you're looking for 
a, a stretch assignment, as Liz called them, or a development opportunity that maybe you're not necessarily going to see um, within your organisation, you can get that with us, perhaps doing something that is quite different to your, your day job. Um, or indeed, from a more philanthropic perspective, if you're keen to pay forward some of the support that you've seen and you've got um, throughout your own career, then, then do let us know. Um, you can find um, our, all of our roles available on our jobs board. Um, just very quickly in terms of how to join, and then I'm going to hand over to, to get Q&A from you. Please go to our website if you're not already a member, and all of the information on our events are also on our website, so do keep an eye out there, and also on our weekly newsletter. And we are the most ridiculously priced um, organisation, hugely reasonable. We ran over 150 events last year, um, as well as everything else, the mentoring programme and everything, and our membership just starts from just £66 per year. And if you can see your organisation um, on this uh, slide, there are a couple of new organisations which I haven't yet had opportunity to add. Um, so we have got, got a couple of others as well, and they're all on the website too. Then your organisation as a partner of, as an institutional partner of Women in Banking and Finance, receives an additional 10% discount on your membership. And there will be a discount code that you can get if you email our operations team. So you've heard a huge amount from us about all of the amazing stuff we're doing, but now we want to answer some of your questions. So I'm gonna hand it over to Rachel, who has been looking at all of the questions coming through on the chat as we've been speaking. Rachel. Thanks, Nat. I've had um, quite a few questions come in directly, um, a couple on a similar topic. So I'm going to start with Stacey. Um, we've had a few people asking how they can get involved with the community. What's the best way to, excuse me, what is the best way to um, kind of connect with you with regards to their involvement? Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. So if you'd like to get in touch via the um, email address that Natalie shared just previously, our very, very wonderful operations team will send me your details and I'll arrange hopefully a call or even a, a quick chat just over text or, or email to get the ball rolling. Thank you very much. Um, another question to come in, I think is a really good one. I might pick on Nat for this one, um, but around volunteering and somebody asking, do they have to officially apply for a role or is there other ways to get involved in with it? Um, and volunteer maybe on a project basis or kind of be on the volunteer list but not in an official capacity? Um, so I think there are both opportunities. The, the underlying um, requirement that we have for somebody to be a volunteer is that they are also a member of WIBIF. We are a not-for-profit um, organisation and we are volunteer-led as we said so um, you do have to be an individual member um, but in terms of getting involved, we, we like to have people, it depends really on, on the area that you want to work through. So if you want to become a relationship manager, for example, and work and connect with some of our institutional partners, then we really do need to have um, more of a commitment from you in terms of longevity. Um, but there are certainly projects and areas where you can get involved on a, on a shorter term basis if that is what is going to suit you. But, but you do need to be an individual member. And I think one of the benefits really is about deepening. Um, you can also deepen your, your networking opportunities through a shared purpose with, with us and with, with the rest of our team. The one thing I do want to say, because I'm really conscious, is obviously we're, we're all females. We're also um, predominantly white females that you've heard from today. Um, I want to just make it really clear that we are an open organisation. Yes, it says women in our title, but we are a gender balanced organisation and we absolutely welcome men both as members, but also as volunteers. Um, another way that you can get involved is either um, on is on the mentoring programme as well. So do think about that. And actually, the one area where you don't have to be uh, an individual member is to become a mentor. So if that is something that you'd be interested in, um, working across different companies, then please do um, look on our website and it's very clear to, to see where to sign up for that as well. Any more questions, Rachel? Yes, uh, question, how do you get your organisation involved or partnered with WIBIP? I think that comes back to me as well. So my, <laughs> my role in, in WIBIP is, is um, as Director of Memberships. 
both the individual memberships, but also our institutional partners. Um, so if you are interested or if you think your organization wasn't one of those ones, I'll shout put it back to there, isn't one of these organisations and you think it would be something that your organisation would like to get involved in, then um, please do email me. Um, I will include my email address and the operations email address um, onto the um, follow up email that we send out to everyone who is registered for today. Nat, can I do a quick plug as well if we've if we've got corporates lurking? Um, the research program, uh, we've got 15 sponsors and we've got five places remaining. So if that whets their appetite, then speak to me. <laughs> Perfect. Um, one final question I'm going to direct to Anna, because the question is, um, what is the one thing you would like to do as the new president? Thank you very much. That's, I would like to celebrate how unique and special um, WIVIF is uh, in terms of a voice and driving change. This is a 40 year old organization. Um, the permission of WIVIF is huge. I've been a member for 18 years. All these wonderful uh, colleagues have talked about why they've joined and the time that they spend. And it's not time that they begrudge. We're all so passionate about it. So for me, it is um, where do I want to focus in the future in terms of a voice? How do I take the brand forward and um, really give us a seat at the table around policy and change and teeth? Um, and I think, you know, I'm, a lot of the, the, the team will know that I'm really toying with this sort of positioning around us as a non-for-profit and thinking about things like how does that work visibly things like social enterprise and all that but i want to i want to celebrate and recognize how amazing this organization is and this group of people these wonderful individuals that give up so many hours of each week um, because they love it and they're passionate about ensuring women have a seat at the table and have a voice so that's my big ambition. I, I'm inspired by, I'm humbled by everybody that I meet in this journey. Um, and I'm so excited about it. If there was ever a time, anybody thinking of joining up or doing more, or, you know, Stacey talks about volunteering, Nat talked about volunteering. I think a lot of us are questioning, think about COVID. Well, anyway, January, but also COVID. If you're thinking about your life at the moment, if you're thinking about, how can I, are there things that I want to make more meaningful? Are there things that are going to make me feel, I don't know, are they more connected or fulfilled? If you're asking yourself all those sorts of questions, now's the time. This is a, such a fantastic organization to join. This is, you know, everybody is so passionate about it. They're busy, successful individuals. They're there to help, they're there to share ideas. And together, we're making a massive difference. So, a very convoluted answer, Rachel, but um, hopefully one that, I don't know, summarises for me how excited and honoured and passionate I am about it. And also how amazing everybody is that I'm privileged to be able to lead. That Thanks, work? Anna. Work for you, look, look, Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> lovely job. Any final questions, Rachel? Or, or yeah. I'm just, we've gone over time, but anything else come through? Do you? One more question, well, one more question at the moment, obviously people do need to drop off. And one more question, um, can we get access to previous PEP programmes? One for you, Sally. So in terms of previous PEP programmes, yes, you can. So on the website, you'll be able to go on and look at sort of any archived events. So if they have been recorded, then we have got access to them. So again, please, you know, reach out to operations, let us know what you're interested in so that we can, do, you know, we can send those on to you. But yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Thank you, Sally, and thank you to everybody um, on, from our management board who spoke today. There are many more of us behind the scenes, and we just want to say a big thank you to all of them as well um, for playing a part in this. But also a huge thank you to all of you. Um, for those of you who are already members, I hope we have re-inspired you and re-energised you at the start of this year to go onto the events list to see what's coming up. 
um, and to sign up uh, to our events, to mentoring and, and to our communities and networking as well. Um, for those of you who are new, um, we hope that this has inspired you and engaged you and that you will look to become a member. Um, if you have any further questions, then please do come to us and let us know and we will follow up with all of you on the information that you've heard today. But for, for now, I think thank you very much from all of us and have a lovely rest of your evening. Thank you.